Hey guys, for today's video, I want to do a deep dive on Adapalene for wrinkles. Does Adapalene actually work to improve wrinkles? How does it compare to tretinoin? Is it an effective anti-aging topical ingredient? These are questions I get frequently in the comment section of my YouTube videos, as well as over on Instagram and TikTok. So rather than doing my best to answer each individual one, because honestly, the response is kind of complicated, I thought I would just make a dedicated video, hopefully clear clarifying the issue further. Now, tretinoin and adapalene, these are retinoids. Retinoid is a class of medications that are vitamin A derivatives. And the way they work is by binding to retinoic acid receptors in the skin. Ultimately, they influence what genes skin cells express. And this can have a wide array of positive outcomes for the skin. We refer to the retinoids based on their generation. There are four generations of retinoids, one, two, three, and four. And these different generations of retinoids differ in the selectivity of which receptors they bind to. Tretinoin is a first generation retinoid and it binds to retinoic acid receptors alpha, beta, gamma, as well as retinoid X receptor. Adapalene, on the other hand, is a third generation retinoid. It's much more selective with who it associates with. It preferentially binds to retinoic acid receptor beta and retinoic acid receptor gamma. Tretinoin is a first generation and structurally it most closely resembles natural vitamin A. Adapalene, on the other hand, a third generation retinoid, it is actually derived from something called naphthalene. And in order to understand adapalene a bit more, you have to kind of understand what the drug companies were thinking when they developed adapalene. They wanted to create something that overcame some of the issues around tretinoin. They wanted to create a retinoid with the aim of decreasing off-target effects that can cause the side effects that many of you have experienced if you've ever used tretinoin, dryness, peeling, irritation. They also wanted to create a drug that was more photostable. Adapalene is also much more resistant in comparison to tretinoin to degradation from oxidation. And for this reason, it can safely be used alongside benzoyl peroxide. You don't have to worry about benzoyl peroxide degrading it. So for acne purposes, that, that's great. Adapalene, as you can imagine, was really created with acne in mind. Adapalene comes in two percentages, 0.1% and 0.3%. In 2016, the FDA said, hey, adapalene can be sold over-the-counter 0.1% strength. So you have different gel was one of the first ones on the market. And now you have a ton of other brands with 0.1% adapalene gel. An FDA approved acne treatment that you can acquire without a prescription. So once that became available, this really opened up the, the realm of questioning, well, Previously, I, I was you know, wanting to get tretinoin, which is prescription only, that has all this body of research behind it, not only for acne, but for improving the look of sun damage, wrinkles, fine lines, age spots. Can adapalene do the same thing? It's a retinoid, and if I can buy it in the store, not have to go in and see a dermatologist and get a prescription, and the FDA has deemed it safe enough for the general public to use without a prescription, well, is it gonna do the same thing? Here's the truth. We don't have the body of research that we do with tretinoin uh, for adapalene in terms of anti-aging, but we do have some preliminary studies that suggest, yes, it may offer some benefit for improving the signs of skin aging. While adapalene is FDA approved for the treatment of acne, in dermatology, we use it off-label to treat other conditions because it does offer some other benefits to the skin beyond helping to clear up and prevent acne breakouts. It has keratolytic properties, so it turns out it, it ends up being actually pretty helpful in the treatment of warts. Adapalene also is, is helpful for improving hyperpigmentation, specifically post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which a lot of people uh, who struggle with acne deal with. The acne goes away, but they're left with a dark mark. It's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It can be really tricky to fade. Adapalene also, in some cases, can help improve the appearance of acanthosis nigricans. I think I talked about this in my video on acanthosis nigricans. Uh, this is uh, related to insulin resistance, dark velvety plaques of thickened skin, and adapalene is a topical that can help improve the appearance of that. Adapalene also helps the cells in the immune system behave more appropriately and has an anti 
anti-inflammatory effect for this reason. It may also explain why it's beneficial in improving warts. So can adapalene help in improving wrinkles, fine lines, the appearance of sun damage? Is it as effective as tretinoin? A study published in the journal of the American Academy of Dermatology it was a nine-month prospective study sought out to examine adapalene at both 0.1% strength and 0.3% strength. They looked prospectively for nine months looking to see if there was an effect on the formation of actinic keratoses. Actinic keratoses are pre-skin cancers. They are a precursor to the skin cancer squamous cell carcinoma. After nine months, there was a modest decrease in the number of actinic keratoses. That decrease actually appeared to be dose dependent, meaning the higher percentage of adapalene showed a uh, more significant decrease in the number of actinic keratoses. They also showed a reduction in the number of solar lenticos or sunspots, as well as an improvement in rough skin texture. Now, it's important to emphasize the way this study was done, they didn't set out to examine the efficacy of adapalene for wrinkles. But once they got to the nine months, they decided to take a look back at photographs. So they did a retrospective review of photographs and actually did note improvement in fine wrinkles and dispigmentation. Of course, that, that has its limitations. You're going back in time, you're looking at photographs. There's not an actual tissue biopsy to show differences. It, it's really just looking at photographs. Now, a study I've mentioned a fair amount whenever we talk about this together is one in which they looked at uh, Chilean women. They had them apply 0.3% adapalene gel every night uh, and then in the morning they had them apply Cetaphil SPF 50 sunscreen. At the end of the study they showed an improvement in discoloration with reduction in melanin by 18.7%. They showed improved skin hydration increasing to 44.9% and a reduction of 54.8% in trans epidermal water loss. They also uh, took an ultrasound and examined skin thickness on ultrasound. Now that's not as good as taking an actual biopsy but it does give you some sense of if the skin thickness is improving. And the, um, the ultrasound showed that the uh, epidermis and dermis were improved in terms of thickness, although that was not statistically significant. Some other limitations though of this study, in addition to not actually having a tissue biopsy sample to show improvement, there's no vehicle control. So a lot of the benefit that they're seeing here could just be the fact that these women are now using an SPF 50 sunscreen every day. And as you guys will recall from other videos I've done here where I've showed you the research, um, there have been trials done where they have patients use sunscreen every day and you see an improvement in the signs of skin aging from just wearing sunscreen alone. So the fact that these women are using SPF 50 sunscreen daily as part of the study, well, you know, that really begs the question, is the improvement in um, the melanin indices, the improvement in skin hydration, the reduction in transepidermal water loss, they now are using sun protection, and of course sunscreens are in a moisturizing base, so that's gonna be helpful for reducing water loss. Is it really the adapalene here that's doing, doing all of this legwork? Uh, I don't know, really need a vehicle control. And by vehicle control, we need some women who are putting on um, who are putting on that gel at night that has no adapalene in it. It's just the gel alone. We need, we need that control in order to, to see, see differences here. Um, but, and, and especially in the group of women that they are looking at here, because as the authors point out, the women in this study had no prior access to any cosmetic procedures. They aren't, they were not, previously doing any sort of cosmetic treatment. They, they represent more of the general population as a whole who's not maybe ne necessarily pursuing aesthetic treatments and as aware about sunscreen. All right, and then last but not least, you have a study from Bagatin, which to me is really one that um, bears thinking about, but again, has its limitations. They look at adapalene zero point uh, 3% versus tretinoin, 0.05%. They show that at 12 weeks and at 24 weeks, adapalene 0.3% was not inferior to tretinoin 0.05% for the improvement of dispigmentation and fine wrinkles. In this study, there was an improvement in wrinkles around the eyes, 
forehead wrinkles, and wrinkles around the mouth. But this study actually took biopsies, uh, tissue biopsies, and looked histologically. This is one of, I think this is one of the only paper we have out there that shows an improvement in not only uh, compaction of the stratum corneum, which is what you want, that's what's smoothing out the skin surface, it shows the increase in epidermal thickness, and it shows down in the dermis improvement in collagen with adapalene 0.3%. So that, you know, it, it's very preliminary. This is a very small study, but uh, it does it does start to beg the question, is adapalene going to be as effective as tretinoin for improving the look of sun damage? Could people just start using adapalene that you can buy over the counter? Adverse events uh, are the side effects of burning, itching, redness, peeling, dryness. Those happened the same to the same extent in both the tretinoin and the adapalene group, and they were of the same severity. All that to say, is adapalene effective for wrinkles? Is it good for anti-aging? Truthfully, we just don't have robust research on adapalene uh, for anti-aging, but we do have some preliminary studies that suggest it may offer benefit for improving the signs of skin aging. Of these three studies though, only the one uh, published in, ja in, in JAD uh, looked at the 0.1% strength, which is what you can buy over the counter. And remember, that study didn't actually set out to look at wrinkles or skin aging. They, they set out to look specifically at actinic keratoses and solar lentigines, not wrinkles. They later looked at wrinkles. They decided to look at wrinkles retrospectively but it didn't set out that way. So there's some gaps in, in, in how that was done. Yeah, so it really becomes difficult to give you a truthful answer as to whether or not adapalene is going to be uh, anti-aging like, like tretinoin. But we don't have that kind of research for adapalene as, as it stands, just preliminary clinical studies that, that really suggest more research is needed. But where does that leave you as a consumer? If you wanna go into the store and buy a form of topical vitamin A, for improving the signs of skin aging. You have adapalene that you could choose, which is, again, an FDA-approved acne treatment, but you also have retinol and retinaldehyde. How do they compare? Retinol, OL, is a cosmetic ingredient. It's not an FDA-approved drug or treatment. It's a cosmetic ingredient, but retinol actually does have quite a bit of research showing efficacy for improving fine lines and having an anti-aging effect. However, the devil's in the details there too because formulation matters. The studies that we have on retinol and the studies that we have on retinol, they have their limitations too. They're definitely not perfect. And a lot of people point out that they're largely industry funded, which makes them more subject to bias. Similar to these adapalene studies, there's a lot of heterogeneity in the retinol studies. They use different strengths, different forms, different brands. And they're largely industry sponsored, which people will point out is, you know, potentially a conflict of interest there. Uh, although the adapalene studies we just went over, uh, those were sponsored by Galderma. Uh, so there's that. Galderma is, is who makes who makes different gel and Cetaphil. Retinol as a cosmetic ingredient, however, it, because it's not a drug, there is a lot more variability out there in the market of what you might encounter in terms of the formulation being effective. Retinol as an ingredient, the formulation overall really matters. So you might have a product out there that's a retinol um, and it, you know, it may just degrade in the tube or whatever. It, it may not effectively get into your skin. Whereas adapalene, it's required to show stability and penetration in order for that FDA approval. So you have a little bit more confidence that it's, it's actually an effective, the active ingredient is actually effective because at least it's FDA approved for the treatment of acne, so it, it must actually get in. Whereas the retinols that you might buy in the store, I mean, there are tons of them out there, right? And I have videos on some that I really like from reputable brands, and that's what I recommend sticking with actually. High, you know, re reputable brands that have been around a while and have a large body of R&D, you can feel pretty confident in their retinols. There's a good chance that they're, they're beneficial, and I have a lot of confidence in, in retinols for that reason. But uh, if you were to compare adapalene between retinol for anti-aging, there's just uh, so many unknowns out there that you can't give a solid answer as to which one is gonna be a better option. I have the most confidence in adapalene as an acne treatment. That's my clinical experience with it. That's what I have the most familiarity with. I also have a lot of confidence in clinical experience 
with adapalene for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and for warts, specifically flat warts on the face can be helpful in that situation. Um, but as far as the research on it for wrinkles and fine lines, TBD, I, I think we just need a lot more research to, to really address that fully. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I hope it was helpful in clarifying how nuanced this is. Anyway, on the end slate, I'm going to put my video reviewing the Gold Bond Retinol if you wanna check that out by all means. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.